Hereby call the December 2nd, 2019 uh, meeting of the Alexander County Board of Commissioners to order. At this time, we will be led an invocation by Commissioner Larry Yoder, followed by Commissioner Marty Pennell with our Pledge of Allegiance. Let us pray. Our kind and gracious, most heavenly Father, we appreciate the opportunity you've given us together here today. We'd ask you that each and every one of us would remember what the reason for the season is, the birth of you. Lord, we'd ask you to look after our military, both home and abroad, be with our federal, state, and local governments, be with those people that are in leadership, that they will seek guidance in the way that they make rules and regulations to govern our people. We'd ask these blessings in thy name. Amen. Amen. Attention. Salute pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Tonight we have uh, special recognitions for Alexander County Foster Parents Association, Brenda Price and Lindsey Cox. Y'all would please come forward. <laughs> yes, ma'am. <clears throat> thought you were. Yeah, we thought, I'm sorry, I thought you were. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, well, the Alexander County Foster Parents Association was started in 1986. The first year um, we had basically me, <laughs> the only one that's still there uh, since uh, we started, but uh, at that particular time I had uh, five foster kids and I kept thinking, okay, how in the world am I going to buy gifts for all these kids for Christmas? So we got with the people from Caldwell County who already had a Foster Parents Association started and we organized uh, our own little group and started sending out letters to the businesses and the churches and people here in the county and we started out with 14 kids in 1986 and we have had as many as 70 that we have done Christmas gifts for over the years. Uh, this year we have 50, and this is uh, Lindsay Cox. She is our president of the association, and uh, uh, the people of the Alexander County have just been wonderful and helped with uh, these kids. We have churches that do angel trees uh, to do individual gifts, and we have people who make individual donations. Thank you, and then we have... Uh... Well, can I ask you a question? Um, <clears throat> so if someone wants to make a donation to you, how do, how do they do that? Make, uh, yeah, anytime anybody wants to make a donation, they can make it out to the Alexander County Foster Parents Association. Uh, we have a post office box. It's 284 here in Taylorsville. And all of these donations are tax deductible, and they go specifically for the kids. Um, we do have money left over after this is the only time we do a fundraiser, take up any money at all, is at Christmas. But we do keep money uh, in the checking account for different things uh, during the year, like field trips, prom dresses, um, yearbooks, if they can't, um, you know, if they need help in doing any of this. And as you know, um, <laughs> we don't do this to get rich. and. We only get the money for what we need to take care of the kids, and anything over and above that is extra. So the Foster Parents Association, uh, that's what we use some of this money <coughs> for. We have used the money in the past for braces for one of the kids who uh, at that particular time did not uh, qualify for uh, uh, Medicaid and could not get the braces that he needed. But um, it's, it's a wonderful thing to see the smiles on these ki kids' faces at Christmas when most of these kids have never been able to have a good Christmas, what I call a good Christmas, with the love and, that we give them. And then to see them open these gifts uh, on Christmas morning, it's, it's really fulfilling. Mm -hmm. How many kids do you have now? 
I don't have any right now. I am 70 years old, and I'm trying to pass the torch. Okay. Right. <laughs> and I've adopted mine, so okay. but they had a Christmas with me. They were provided okay. for last Christmas. Mm -hmm. oh, that's great. Yeah, I've been doing this since 1982. I got my mm -hmm. first uh, child in January of 82 and had right now 197 kids. Wow. So yeah. over Touched a lot of lives. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so. I keep telling them when I get to 200, I'm retiring, so we'll see. <laughs> She's not retiring. Uh, you keep going. Yeah. All right, thanks. Okay. Well, certainly appreciate all that both of you do, and my goodness, Brenda, that's amazing over that time frame, the, the difference that's been made and immeasurable. I mean, can't count it. Yeah, they're, they've filled a special place in my heart, too. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Brenda. Uh -huh. And uh, are we doing uh, I don't know. I, she came up here and I shook her head. I just gave it to her a little bit ago. So I, I think that's good. If you want. I'm just going to mail mine if that's okay. That's fine. <laughs> I, I, I ran in Brent, here. While you're getting the money, Brenda, <laughs> I, I know that over the years I've watched you take care of these kids for years and years. And uh, uh, I really appreciate everything that you've done. And, Watch these little kids grow and watch you have them around the pool down there and Sonny carry them off to the ball fields and everything else. So, y'all have done. Yes, you have. Thank you. Thank you, man. And I've got a check coming for you right here, also. Right there. Jennifer. Yeah. <coughs> That's what I call calling the backup. <laughs> Let me, let me, let me have that one. Mm. Thank you. <clears throat> this time we'll entertain any commissioner's reports. What? Oh, yes. I'm sorry. Uh, Officer Starnes with uh, Santa Cops. <clears throat> Alexander County Sheriff's Department Santa Cops program. Philip Starnes. And the floor is yours, sir. <laughs> um, you can go at the next slide, Chet. Um, Santa Cops in Alexander County is something um, that's very special to me. I, I love this program. Um, Captain Mike Harrison, who I learned a lot from, started back in 2009 as a community project. He designed it while he worked at Conover, the police department. And as he came back to Alexander County, he brought it here with him. Um, and we've done it every year since then. I started helping him when we came down to the new building um, about six years ago, and I've been part of it for the past six years, and I've really taken over just the past couple years. Um, what we do <coughs> is, and which was Harrison's goal, uh, is to help children who may otherwise not receive gifts during Christmas because their parents are in, in our jail, in our detention center during Christmas and Christmas Eve. Next slide, Chad. Um, the way the operations really work is I start out, I'll make a post on social media. Social media is everywhere now, so that's usually where we start, um, letting the public know that we're starting up the program. Um, then we, I go to personally every pod that's back in the detention center, and I talk to every pod and explain to them what the program is, how it works, what the criteria is. You do have to meet certain criteria to be part of the program. And we hand out these request forms uh, for them to fill out and turn back into us. Um, and then I get these big cardboard boxes, and our detention officers will wrap them in wrapping paper. We stick our sign on them, and we place them out throughout the county in different places to collect donations from the public and the community. Uh, we get a huge turnout every year. Uh, the community really loves this program. They learn about the program. And it means a lot to us. Um, once we get all the uh, boxes out, I go back on social media, let everybody know the boxes have been placed. Uh, donations are welcome. I'll start collecting the request forms from uh, the inmates, and I go through and check off, and I talk to the families. I go out <coughs> to the house, uh, talk to the uh, family members that are watching the kids or have the kids to talk to them to get a real understanding of what the child's going through, what their likes, what are their dislikes. Um, I always tell people, uh, especially like my son, 
He's a huge Avenger, Avengers fan. He loves the Avengers. He is not a big Superman fan, so I don't want to get him a Superman <laughs> action figure when he wants um, the Hulk or something like that. So I try to really dig into what these ki what the child wants for Christmas, and that's and that's kind of what we shoot for. Um, at some point, we go out and collect all the boxes, and then we will sit down and sor sort out through all the toys. Um, we actually used to do it in this room a long time ago. We set up tables, sort out every toy that was donated to us, and we go through and handpick them for each child on what we think the child would like. Um, once that is done, we get a lot of volunteers to come in and help us wrap. Um, I don't like wrapping, but I will help. <laughs> Usually my wife does all the wrapping. Um, so we'll, we'll have a big wrapping party. And then once the wrapping party is done, I post another picture on social media, letting everybody know, kind of seeing how the program's going. And then on Christmas Eve or Christmas Day, whichever works out better for the family, uh, officers in uniform, whether it's a detention officer or a sworn deputy, even the sheriff, the sheriff goes with us every time, we go out and deliver these presents on Christmas Eve or Christmas Day. Next slide, Chad. Um, this is just a, this is what the request form looks like. We get the children's name, what their likes are, what their dislikes are. I get a good address and phone number and the inmate's name so we know who, whose child we're going to go see and I get as much information as I can before we get out there. The criteria, they have to be in custody in Alexander County. Um, they can't be anywhere else. The family, the child has to live in Alexander County or at least be living with the family member in Alexander County. The child must be ages 16 years or younger. It is very hard, even nowadays with the way technology is, um, when you start, even when you start messing with 12 to 14, they love technology. So we, we do try to uh, accommodate that. Uh, the child must be a biological or legally adopted. Um, we always tell them we can't buy your cousin's kids gifts. It's just not the way the program works. Uh, next slide, Chad. Uh, this is just a picture of our collection boxes. Uh, we wrap them almost every single year. We wrap them in new wrapping paper and put our signs on them. And we place them out. Right now, this year, we've got seven different places. We have the sheriff's office, the courthouse, the library here in town, the library in Bethlehem, Oliver's Landings Clubhouse, the Alexander County, I believe it's the service center, with the Register of Deeds and the tax office, um, the Stony Point Fire Department, is the seven places we have this year. Go ahead, Jeff. Um, donations, we, we accept donations all year round. Um, the couple with the, the smaller bicycles, they're Terry and Nancy. They have came down and donated two small bicycles to us for the last couple years. And uh, I wanna say they either live up north and move down here or they live up north and they have a house down here they come down here and stay when it's colder up north. Um, the picture in the middle um, was really heart touching. His name was Noah. That was his ninth birthday. He brought all of his presents that he got for his ninth birthday. He told his mom he wanted to donate them to Santa Cops. He, they heard about the program, and so he brought them up. Those were his birthday gifts that he brought up to us. Um, the next picture is the two bicycles that we raffled off for National Night Out that Walmart donated to National Night Out. We did a raffle for them. And uh, one of the ladies donated uh, one of their bicycles to Santa Cops. And so we have it waiting to give to a child. Next slide, Chad. Um, this is a picture of the toy selection, how we sit them out on the table. It, it does take us time to go through them because we just, like I said, we want to make sure the child is getting something that they will <coughs> would want. Go ahead, next child. Um, there's some pictures of the wrapping party. Um, Lieutenant Moore, the sheriff, Lieutenant Davis is in there, some of my detention officers. Um, we, we have a good time. We wrap presents and eat pizza is what we end up doing. And next slide. This is a picture of after everything's done, we bag them up and we tag what bag goes to with, with child and the directions and what time. Next slide, Chad. Um, this is just some pictures of the deliveries that we've had. Uh, some are older deliveries, some are newer deliveries. And 
a lot of times, whenever we do have older kids, um, if we, if there's something, there's one question I always ask every family is, what is one thing that the child wants for Christmas? What, what's one thing? Everybody that has kids, they know they want that one special thing. If it is not something just outrageous, all the money that is donated to us, we go out and buy it. Um, that was the, the punching bag. He that, that kid really wanted to punch him bag. He was into ROTC and things like that, and that was something he really wanted. And actually, uh, one of my detention officers uh, bought it for him. That's all I've got. Great <clears throat> program. You know, and I, I knew, I didn't know the sheriff was, Sheriff Bowman was a rapper. I saw him do a little country two-step a week or so ago, but I didn't know he was a rapper. Well, we appreciate all you do, Philip, and uh, uh, Captain Harrison started that, and it's a, you know, a great thing, and these kids are in a bad situation, and it's not their fault, and, uh, you know, you want to try to uh, bring some sort of normalcy around them around the holidays uh, and, and, they, and these kids remember us coming yeah I saw a child uh, just this morning that I remember <coughs> going out to their house two years ago and he he reminded me this morning hey you're the one that came out and brought me um, the he, he was into soccer and so we, we bought him soccer balls soccer cleats and he he remembered and he told me that this morning <coughs> It's, they, they remember us coming out. Wonderful program. Yes, yes sir. Good. Glad mm -hmm. you're doing it. And it's a good positive interaction there with, you know, law, law enforcement. And, and that's the biggest reason why, and that's one big reason why we do it, because we know that the children see us come out and arrest their parents. Mm -hmm. And we know their parents may or may not be saying bad things about law enforcement. We don't want them to have that feeling against us, so we try to make it better. Mm -hmm. And it's just this one of the small things that we do. Well, we appreciate everything you do. Yes, sir, very and much. Uh, thank you. Thank I you. actually got a couple things. Okay. Yeah, just a little shop. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a couple things, too. Uh, i got a couple things for you also, Philip, uh, and I'll and grab those. Mike's coming to school Thursday, so we're yes. going to there you go. take care Good of Good job. Here. Thank Appreciate you what you much. do. Thank you all very much. You're welcome. Thank you, sir. <coughs> Two outstanding programs. This is another great testament of wonderful people who care and rally around doing good things for people. It's touching. At this time, we entertain any commissioner's report. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I attended the grand opening of a HVAC company down here tonight, uh, Freedom HVAC. Uh, real good guys. Uh, I think we need some more things in the county, so that's just another business that's you know coming into the county. And uh, very nice people. Had a lot of years of experience in that uh, line of business, and uh, it's a good thing. Like I say, any business coming to the county is a good thing. And I'd just also like to take this time to wish everybody a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. <coughs> Thank you, sir. Others? Certainly not any kind of state of the county by any means, but just thinking today, we have, uh, we spoke last month, but we have new restaurants, new businesses, a low unemployment rate. We moved into the new centralized uh, uh, Central Service Center, Consolidated Human Services, Consolidated Emergency Services, big sewer and water projects, uh, Borealis has kicked off and has been successful, uh, increased funding in uh, schools, emergency services, and DSS, and our fund balance increased to 31 percent approximately. We've got the projects at Wittenberg Access and Dusty Ridge going on. Uh, visitor count at Rocky Face continues to grow, and the boom that's getting ready to hit Bethlehem with this road widening project is going to bring forth uh, a lot of uh, a lot of development. So, uh, a lot of things have happened in the last year. I think we all should be uh, 
excited about uh, the tick in which our compass is pointing. It's, it's definitely moving in the right direction. So uh, sometimes we sit around and you think, well, what's going on? But then when you stop and pause and reflect and look back, there are, there are a lot of great things that are going on every day in our county, and it's just exciting to uh, see and watch as, as we grow and do great things for people. And tonight, wow, what a uh, compassion. You know, that, that's something can be said about most people in Alexander County. When, when the chips are down or when there's a problem, you can count on people and it uh, come together and do the right thing. So uh, been very reflective for me today, and I'm just thankful to be able to uh, be part of this. Wish y'all a Merry Christmas, safe, and happy holidays. We have one item that we'd like to add to our agenda. Um, we received uh, in November from the school board information about uh, increased uh, school board salary. So I'd like to add that uh, to our agenda that would replace, or I guess we'll just add it as number. Uh, It'll be number 11 and other business will be number 12. That said, we have an adoption uh, motion to adopt our agenda. Make a motion we adopt as stated. Here's second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor, please raise your right hand. Motion passes unanimously. Uh, there is no public comment. So next on the agenda, we will have uh, Martin and Starnes share with us our audited financial statement. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Um, Erica Brown with Martin Starnes, and I'm here to present to you the 2019 um, audited financial statements, just some summary points. Um, the audit has been submitted to the Local Government Commission as required, and we are awaiting uh, their approval, which sh we should have soon. <clears throat> so we did issue an unmodified audit opinion, and in layman's terms, that's a clean opinion. Um, that means we found no material misstatements that led us to believe that the financial statements would be misleading to the reader. Um, and as always, your finance staff and DSS staff are, are wonderful. They're always very well prepared and, and cooperative with us, and we really appreciate Jennifer and um, Linda and all their staff. Um, uh, one other thing that I'd like to bring up is we did implement a new standard this year. It's GASB 88. Uh, it's a footnote disclosure for debt. So if you're used to looking at the audit report, the debt section looks a little bit different. Basically, we're just required to disclose more things with the debt to make it a little more <coughs> clear for the reader. So I'm going to start with the general fund and go through some of the revenues um, and expenditures, and then we'll move on to some of your enterprise funds. So your property taxes are 52% of your general fund revenues, local option sales tax, 24%, and restricted intergovernmentals, which are your federal and state grants, are 11%. Um, then what we have left over there is we have sales and services at 9%, and um, permits and fees are at 2%. And up there, the other revenues, those include taxes and license and miscellaneous revenues in there. So look at Avalorum taxes. Your Avalorum taxes increased a little over 1%, so comparable to prior year, up around $240,000. There was no tax rate change, but there was an increase in your collection percentage from 97.06 to 97.42%. Uh, local option sales tax, this also increased about 8.5% or $750,000 and that's mainly due to your articles 39, 40, 44, and 46 sales tax revenues increasing. So this is a great thing. Restricted intergovernmental revenues. Again, these are your federal and state um, grant dollars that you get increased slightly at 2.5%, a little over $100,000. And then moving on to expenditures. The four largest expenditures are public safety, human services, 
sorry, public safety at 30%, human services at 25%, education at 18%, and general government at 18%. Uh, public safety expenditures, they increased uh, about 7.8% from last year, or $786,000. Um, this includes your sheriff's department, um, sheriff's office, detention center, fire protection, emergency communications, inspections, and emergency medical. Um, with emergency communications, there were two additional positions that were added in fiscal year 19, <coughs> and that contributed to the increase in salaries and benefits. And there was also a large increase in the detention center for fiscal year 19 due to unusually high inmate medical bills for a few um, inmates that you had. And human services, this includes health department, um, DSS, and the senior center. There was an increase of a little over 4%, um, or $350,000. And this is mainly due to the addition of behavioral health and primary care expenditures in fiscal year 19. And there was also some slight increases in dental health, DSS administration, and special appropriations. <coughs> And education. Education increased close to 8% or $488,000. Um, this includes your current expenses for County Board of Education and CVCC expenses. Um, the main increase was mainly due to expenses for Alexander County Board of Education. And then general government. This includes governing body, administration, planning, finance, IT, public buildings, and HR. Um, this increased about 11% or $675,000, um, increase mainly due to planning, finance, and HR increases. And this slide shows us your debt for the general fund. So you can see that um, the current year debt was $1.6 million in debt service. 1.4 of that is principal payments and 200,000 is for interest. Um, the total governmental notes payable balances um, at 63019 were five point, close to $5.5 million. And this is actually a decrease of $1.7 million from the prior year. Um, this is due to timely payments. And we also paid off um, Alexander Central High School Auditorium and Social Services Building, I believe. And to move on a little bit and talk about fund balance. So fund balance um, basically serves as a measure of the county's financial resources available. So if you take your assets and your deferred outflows and subtract your liabilities and deferred inflows, you get your fund balance or your net position. Um, this is then broken down into five classifications. Non-spendable, those would be items such as prepaids or inventory. Um, and then you have restricted, that's restricted by outside sources, um, such as grantors that put restrictions on money that you haven't spent, and state statute. Um, then you have committed, which is the next level. That is internal constraints at the highest level, which is the board. Um, these don't expire, but they require board action to undo. And I believe you do not, do not have any committed currently. And then assigned, which is also internally a lower level than committed, and it, that would be something like ex assigned for subsequent year expenditures, which you do during the budgeting process. And then what is left over is your unassigned. Now the Local Government Commission, they define available fund balance um, by taking total fund balance, less your non-spendable money, which would be inventory or prepaids, um, less stabilization by state statute, and basically what that is are your receivables because they're not available to be spent, and that leaves you with available fund balance. Um, the available fund balance calculation is utilized as a basis for comparing you to other units and calculating your fund balance percentages, um, and they really look at this to maintain available fund balance percentage around your average population group. So for 2000, fiscal year 2019, there was an increase in general fund fund balance of $743,000. Um, the available fund balance percentage of total general fund expenditures and transfers out, this is the percentage local government commission looks, um, looks at, was 31.7%. Um, so that's around, normally we say, that's around three to four months worth of expenditures that you have in available fund balance. <coughs> So 
So this is another look at your fund balance, the total fund balance of $17 million. And then if we back out the non-spendable and state statute, that leaves the available fund balance of $12.5 million, which uh, is $446,000 increase over the prior year. And that's mainly due to overall increase in your total fund balance. Uh, moving on to your enterprise funds, this is a solid waste fund overview. Your cash flows from operations were $60,000. This is actually an increase of $56,000 from the prior year. Um, that is due to an increase in cash received from customers. And then your budgetary net income was $158,000, whereas last year it was $71,000. So that um, is also quite a... Um, I'm sorry, it was 88000 for an increase of seventy one, and that's also due to an increase in revenues. <clears throat> the net position of your solid waste fund, um, and again, net position is similar to fund balance. If you take your assets plus your deferred outflows, <coughs> less your liabilities and deferred inflows, um, you get your um, total net position. So total net position... Um, was 29, close to $30,000. If we back out the net investment and capital assets, that gives you an unrestricted net position of negative $663,000. But there was actually an increase in your net position from prior year. Um, and the prior year, your total net position actually had a deficit. Um, it was negative 38,000. So the 29.5 that you see up there last year was negative. So what that says is if there's no revenues coming in and you still have to pay off all your debts and, and you calculate your cash on hand that you're negative 663 Yes, so the net investment and capital asset number is made up of the capital assets you have less the debt that you owe right. on those capital assets. Okay, okay. gotcha. Uh, well, water funds overview here. We have Bethlehem Water and uh, County Water and Sewer. Cash flows from operations for Bethlehem Water were $682,000. Um, that is up about $4,000 from the prior year. And the budgetary net income is $565,000, and that's actually up $145,000 from the prior year. And then for your county water and sewer, you've got an increase in cash flow from operations of 68,000. Uh, current year 644. Uh, last year was around 577. And then um, there was a decrease in a decrease <coughs> in the net income from the prior year, although it was still an income. Last year's net income was 344,000. This year's 316,000. And then here, if we look at net position for the water funds, Bethlehem <coughs> Water, um, again, total net position, less your net investment and capital assets give you $2.8 million for Bethlehem Water and unrestricted, and that is an increase of 329000 from prior year. And the county water and sewer, um, unrestricted net position 2.4, and that is an increase of close to 300000 from the prior year's net position. And if we look at the water funds debt, uh, county water and sewer outstanding debt is $4.4 million. Um, we have principal and interest that was paid during the current year, and this debt is expected to be paid off in 2035. <coughs> so that was a whole lot of information thrown at you trying to summarize it. Um, once you get copies of your audit report, um, I always urge you to look at the management discussion and analysis that's in the front of the audit report. It's a lot more condensed and just gives you an overview of why things increased and decreased and also gives you um, some highlights for fiscal year 20's budget. Um, and then the last thing I wanted to mention is that in the upcoming years, there's a new standard. It's GASB 87. It's a lease standard, um, and basically <clears throat> it defines a capital lease versus an operating lease and how they're required to be reported. So there will be some changes there. Um, this is applicable for years beginning after December 15th of 2019, and so this will um, apply to the county for fiscal year 2021. 
So we have time. I bring it up because um, this is, we're waiting on local government commission guidance, and there will also, GASB will have an implementation guide that we can provide and we'll let our clients know when this is available. But this will take a lot of, um, depending on how many leases you have, this could take some time um, for the finance staff to go through and make sure that the leases are categorized properly. And we just have to be cautious with um, independence that we can't make those decisions for you. So we can provide that information, but let's say you have 50 leases, that's a lot of leases to go through and understand um, how this affects the financial statement. So that is something that um, we're making sure our clients are, are aware of and we'll forward any information we have once we get it. And that is all I have, unless there's any questions. Thank you, um, Ms. Brown. I'm sorry, I got a couple questions. Go ahead. Mm. No, you go ahead. I was just, thank you. Oh, um, <clears throat> as far as fund balance goes, uh, it went up from last year. Can you remind me what it was last year? Yeah. Let's see. For the general fund, correct? Yes. Okay. Jennifer, you don't have that handy, do you? Increase. The total fund balance or the available fund total, balance? Total, just total. The total fund balance last year was twelve million one hundred forty thousand, and this year is twelve million five hundred eighty-seven thousand. Okay. Um, That's available. Yes. Available. You're talking about available. I'm oh, talking about total. 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 Sorry. The three point the thirty-nine. No. no. Okay. I've got the increase I'm of 743, sorry, but, but I don't have the totals with me. Really. <clears throat> well, let me ask you an easier question then. Okay. So <laughs> under general government, uh, we had an increase of uh, expenses out of there. Um, just, you know, uh, off the cuff number, what do you think it was for, is, is part of that related to health insurance? Yes. <clears throat> the general government, well, that would be actually spread throughout all the different functions for all okay. the departments, but for the general government itself, the increase, uh, one of the main things is the planning department was budgeted in with the general government function mm -hmm. for fiscal year 19. The previous year, it was included with public safety because it was okay. combined with inspections. So that's about 193000 of that increase for general government with planning departments now budgeted separately. Um, and then also for general government in the finance office, there was an increase of around $90,000 because we had some increased um, professional services expenses and um, we filled some vacant positions. Um, HR, they had about a 90000 increase because they um, filled some vacancies in human resources, plus there were some increases in the retiree health insurance because all the retiree health insurance is accounted for in the human resources department instead of being split among all the departments. Okay. So that's where the gov general government increases came from. Okay. Uh, with that, in that same vein, if I could, I'm sure maybe more questions, but with that fund balance, it was uh, 31.7 as a, as available. You know what that percentage was last year? The percent last year um, to compare to the 31.7, it was 31.01. And I will say this, for our population group, which is between the 25,000 and 50,000 population for the county, they don't have the information out yet for 630-19, but last year it was 34.4% for the average of our population group. So we're just a little bit below that. And I do have total fund balance last year was um, 16.3 million, and this year it's seven, a little over 17. A very good report, and we do have a lot of things that we've done and spent some money on. So, I think as long as we're coming up and adding to it with what's going on, that's real good. I appreciate all your work on that. Well, along the way, we've saved more mm -hmm. as a percentage as well. So, mm -hmm. yeah. I'd love to see it at 34 percent next year. I keep saying that. Mm -hmm. so one of these days, we're going to hit it. Yeah. Um, a lot better Much was better. I, I mean, the, the trend is um, up. Uh, we we were up a little bit more than that a couple of years ago, but then we had some right. some planned expenditures. So, uh, but I think we're staying in the, a good range as far as um, the LGC, what they monitor and what they're looking for. We're staying in that same population group average, and like I said, our trend over time is not um, rising and falling dramatically. So I think that's a good sign. Oh, we're in. Yeah, we're in. Yeah, yeah we're in good shape. We've done. Mm. Yeah. 
And That's I always good. get asked the question, are, is our fund balance, you know, you know, is that percentage good? Are we in good financial shape? And, you know, my answer is you can compare yourself to other population groups, but it also depends at where you're, where you're at as a county or a municipality. If, if you're planning a big project and saving money to spend on that project, then um, your fund balance may be much higher than your group, whereas if you've just spent that planned money, it may be a lot lower. So there's lots of factors in there. Another big important thing is keeping that fund balance up above 31, at least to 34, because of the fact what LGC will do. You know, I think it's vitally important, especially if we have any major projects coming. Yeah. Uh, anything that we do, they will look at that and they will compare us to everyone else before they make a decision to say yes. Right. And we have to always remember that. That's why our fund balance needs to stay as high as possible and uh, not spend it. Very important. Good job. <clears throat> Thank you. Good audit. Thank, Thank you, ladies. informative. Thank you. Good audit. Yeah. First time I ever heard <coughs> that. <laughs> what? Yeah. Good audit. Yeah. Well, we have heard the audit report presented so eloquently by Ms. Brown and Ms. Herman. Uh, entertain a motion to approve our audited financial statement. Move to approve. Second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor, please raise your right hand. Motion passes unanimously. <coughs> At this time, uh, we will uh, entertain uh, nominations and election of board chairman uh, for next year. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to nominate Mr. Ryan Mayberry for chairman. Okay, we've heard Mr. Mayberry. Are there any others? So we have a motion on the floor to nominate Mr. Mayberry, and I have a second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor, please raise your right hand. Congratulations, Mr. Mayberry. Thank you. And now we will entertain a motion to, uh, for the election of our board vice chairman. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I nominate uh, for vice chairman uh, Commissioner Larry Yoder. We've heard the motion. Are there any others? I do have a second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor, please raise your right hand. Congratulations, Mr. Yoder. Thank you. So, uh, Mr. Mayberry will be our board chair, and Mr. Yoder will be our uh, vice chair for next year. This time we will uh, look at our fee adoptions for special events. Uh, Mr. Uh, Rick French. Uh, Mr. French, can you hang on one second? I just want to say <clears throat> you've done an excellent job this year. Thank uh, you. Did a great job. So we appreciate you guiding us through this past 12 months. Thank you, sir. Looking forward to the next 12 months. <laughs> Sorry to interrupt. Um, <clears throat> under the fees uh, for the special events, we have three categories, uh, law enforcement charging $30 per hour <clears throat> per officer with a minimum of three hours at an event, uh, also asking that the wages be paid directly to the officer um, from the uh, whoever we, um, whoever's using the, the event would not come to the county. Um, for f volunteer fire departments, if we need uh, firemen for some reason in the in one of our uh, events, twelve to fourteen dollars per hour per fireman, and also a minimum of for a minimum of three hours. EMS twenty five dollars per paramedic per hour, twenty five dollars uh, per hour for the use of a unit. EMS has a couple of different ways uh, of stationing those units, and that also would be for three hours. And those are the recommendations from the departments, Mr. Chairman. Well, Mr. Trench, I would like to add there, too, that uh, those things are happening, and uh, somebody's got to pay them. I mean, it's uh, people giving, you know, services, and, you know, that they are to be paid for their services, and we definitely, uh, if we want people there, we're going to have to, take care of them so the the mindset here is the 
whoever has the event would take care of those situations. So we have heard uh, the suggested fees for special events. Do I have a motion to pass this? Make a motion to adopt the fees as stated. I have a second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor, please raise your right hand. Motion passes unanimously. Mr. French will now share with us about special events ordinance and application. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, in your packet, you have the proposed special event ordinance and the proposed special event application form with, and the rules and regulations. Again, the, as we discussed uh, during our two public hearings, and uh, the purpose of the proposed ordinance is to establish a structured process for permitting the staging of special events to ensure proper planning and adequate allocation of county resources during special events and to pr protect the health, welfare, and safety of the public attending such events. The special event process enables Alexander County to have knowledge of dates and location of activities happening on county-owned or leased property, uh, uh, ensure open communication of event details that it, they occur between county offices and departments, uh, ensure an appropriate staffing of emergency services and law enforcement personnel based on the estimated uh, event attendance, require event organizers to provide a certificate of insurance naming the county as additionally insured to reduce the county's liability for accidents which may or may not happen during the special events or on county property, ensuring valid permits and liability insurance are in place for the distribution of alcohol during a special event, determining road closures during events that will be that will impact traffic so the county may better coordinate with state and local officials uh, such as the NCDOT Highway Patrol, ensure all proposed events meet local, state, and federal regulations and in, like the NC Fire Code, Environmental Health, Crowd Control, Sanitation. Several uh, except exemptions to this ordinance, um, functions of government agencies, school-sponsored <coughs> events on school-owned property, uh, church activities happening on church-owned property, business holding events in venues designated for large numbers of people where a safety and emergency plan approved by the county is already in place and events held on property owned by a private residence. There's an appeals process um, and with the adoption of this ordinance, we will start contacting um, folks that have been using, have been uh, leasing and would, so we can get them in advance so we can be proactive in this is something we talked about earlier. Um, there's a lot of other things, but we've had two public, two public hearings on this. I'll be glad to try to answer any questions, but I would recommend that we approve the ordinance as presented and the ordinance uh, special event application form. Well, Mr. French, I'd like to add, too, that we, after our first public hearing, I believe it was, we, we had, um, we had some feedback we and, did. and all that was addressed, uh, within the policy. So, uh, People's input has been sought and has been listened to and changes have been made. So if there are people who are not happy with this ordinance at this point, then it would certainly be their own fault for not having stated things that they did not agree with. It's been plenty of notice and, and plenty of pleas for input. Uh, and I think you've done a really good job, uh, you and all those who were involved in putting this together. So I just wanted to state that openly. So you've heard the motion, or the, uh, the ordinance from Mr. French. We entertain a motion to adopt uh, this ordinance and application. I move to approve. And a motion, we have a second. <clears throat> Second. Any discussion? <clears throat> All in favor, please raise your right hand. Motion passes unanimously. Mr. French now share with us budget calendar for fiscal year 2020-2021. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, 
time flies when you're having fun. Right? Yes, right. sir. Um, in your packets, you have a budget calendar for the next fiscal year. On February 20th, we'll, uh, the budget information will be distributed to department heads and mailed or emailed to outside agencies. On March the 6th, we will, uh, add, we will submit uh, technology request forms. They'll be due from department heads to the Information Technology Department. On March the 20th, the budget requests and revenue estimates are due to finance. Outside agency requests are due to finance. On April the 20th, Finance provides first budget uh, printout to the county manager. By April 17th, 2020, school system, system representatives meet with the Board of Commissioners Finance Committee to discuss the budget requests prior to submitting budget requests to the county. Uh, they contact county manager to schedule that meeting to be held on April 17th or a date we can agree on and work out. April the 30th, the school board uh, request are due to the county manager. May the 4th, commissioner's meeting, we discuss uh, budget topics. May 5 through the 14th, budget work sessions are scheduled and are, we have them as needed. Uh, on the 18th of May, the county manager submits a budget and budget message to the board and files a copy with the clerk to be made available for public inspection. May the 20th, the clerk publishes a notice. <coughs> we have work sessions. If, we, if those are needed between May 21st and May 28th, June 1st, commissioners meeting the, the public hearing on the budget, um, and if we need additional work sessions, we could have them between that meeting and the budget uh, adoption, which is, will be held on June 15th, 2020, and that sort of follows our normal schedule, Mr. Chairman, and that's uh, the budget calendar, calendar we are recommending. Well, that just sort of makes it all seem rather simple. Yes, it does. <laughs> Imagine that. <laughs> all right, we have uh, been explained uh, the budget calendar. Uh, this time, we entertain a motion to adopt the budget calendar for fiscal year 2020-2021. Move to approve. The motion, second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor, please raise your right hand. The motion passes <coughs> unanimously. And at this time, I'll call on Commissioner Ryan Mayberry to share with us the proclamation declaring December 1st through the 31st, 2019, as Christmas in Bethlehem. Uh, well, as every, uh, everyone knows, uh, every year we proclaim uh, December to be Christmas in Bethlehem. And uh, I'm going to read off this uh, proclamation since I am the uh, uh, commissioner resident of Bethlehem. So, uh, Proclamation declaring December 1st through December 31st, 2019 as Christmas in Bethlehem. Whereas the Bethlehem Community Development Association has been a longtime supporter of improvements and quality of life issues in the Bethlehem area, and whereas Alexander County government wishes to assist the Bethlehem Community Development Association in promoting events that increase community spirit and offer opportunities for fellowship during the Christmas season, and whereas the Bethlehem star lighting has been a fixture of the Christmas season for more than 40 years, annually drawing thousands of citizens to the Bethlehem area, and whereas the annual Bethlehem star lighting will take place on December 7, 2019, and whereas a live nativity drive through will occur December 15th through 17th, 2019. And whereas these Christmas events promote values and morals which are the binding fiber of the community and are strongly supported by the Bethlehem Community Development Association, area churches, businesses, and citizens. Now therefore be it resolved that the Alexander County Board of Commissioners does hereby declare December 1st through December 31st, 2019 as Christmas in Bethlehem. Adopted the second day of December 2019. And I make that um, in the form of a motion that we uh, pass this proclamation. Thank you, sir. We've heard the motion. We have a second. I'll second that. Second. Any discussion? All in favor, please raise your right hand. Certainly, uh, motion passes unanimously, and a uh, lot of good events and great things coming there. That's good stuff. This time, Mr. French will share with us the budget amendments uh, 24 through 28. 
Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The budget amendment number 24 is to increase the sheriff's office budget to pur purchase 800 mil megahertz handheld radios with federal grant funds passed through the North Carolina Department of Public Safety Governor's Crime Commission. The radios will increase inoperable communications uh, ability in surrounding counties with state agencies which use the state's system. The grant budget uh, provides for nine radios at $2,675 each for a total cost of $24,075. No local match is required. Um, number 20, budget amendment 25 is the budget for a donation made to the Bethlehem Branch Library. Budget amendment 26 is the budget for true up adjustments for the uh, fiscal year 2019 tax revenues compared to 2019 disbursements to fire districts. Budget amendment number 27 is the budget for closeout of the sure tape job retention and wastewater project. Uh, um, number 28 is to budget for the closeout of the Alexander County Industrial Park pump station replacement project. And I think that's all of them, Mr. Chairman. I'm glad to answer any questions. Well, one question, uh, with the radios, yes, sir. <coughs> are those like uh, Piper radios, or are they, are they, they signals good everywhere, I guess? Yes, sir. That's quite a deal. Yes, it is. All right, we've heard the uh, ordinance amendments. Do uh, any questions? I'd just like to say those are good amendments. Well, we don't cost us anything, actually. <laughs> That's it. That's Not one penny there. It's already done. I mean, you know, I'd like to make a motion to approve the amendments as presented. 24, 25, 26, 27, 28. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? <laughs> All in favor, please raise your right hand. Motion passes excitingly. Mm -hmm. Mr. French now share board appointments and reappointments. Uh, local Emergency Planning Committee. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Appoint Doug Gillespie and Andrew Ferguson for three years. Reappoint Leanne Wisnett, Chris Bowman, uh, and Patricia Baker for three years. That's all we have. Heard the suggested appointments. Do we have a motion to approve? Make a motion to approve board appointments. Second. Any discussion? All in favor, please raise <coughs> your right hand. The motion passes unanimously. Number 11, the, the item added to the agenda was the uh, request from the school board to increase their salaries. This would be coming out of school board budget, uh, and not out of our money, but out of school board money. And the uh, general statute says that the tax levying authority for a local school administrative unit may, under the procedures of general statute 153A-92, fix the compensation and expense allowances paid members of the Board of Education of that local school administrative units, uh, per diem, mileage, all through. So basically stating that the Board of Commissioners uh, sets the salary schedule for the Board of Education. And they have uh, gone for a long time, I'm not sure what that date is, uh, and have requested uh, to do away with the differentiation of the way they were structured and to have uh, $600 a, a month for all members. Uh, I'd like to ask the county manager a question, if you may. Um, so this money does not flow through our budget to their budget. Um, it's strictly part of their part of their budget and part yes, of their uh, revenues and expenses. Yes, sir. Okay, so it's not a okay. 
not not to say it's not part of the appropriation we give to them, but it's right. part of the money they get. They use that's how they use, right. choose to use. Yes, sir. I, I think it's a budget item that they've asked us to look at during the budget session. Therefore, I'd make a motion to table this and let the finance committee uh, handle this for the 2020-21 uh, session, because uh, and then uh, let it be presented at that time since it was an add-on addition tonight. Uh, so the general public will have uh, knowledge of what's going on here so that uh, uh, it'd be published in, a, uh, in an agenda item that the general public would know what was happening. I'd make that in the form of a motion. I'd second that motion. Can I ask a question? Is that based on, you said it's a budget item? It'd be, it'd be an increase in the budget as far as I'd be concerned because you're gonna, we're going to approve it, but then for the school board it'll be an, an additional fund right money. And then I'm sure the school will come back and ask us for additional funding. Well, with all due respect, um, it, it is a budget item, but it's yeah. not a budget item for us. And it's how they choose to spend their money and compensate their members. So I, I don't see it as part of our budget per se uh, and being a budget item on, on our end. That's, so we have definitely two different uh, opinions on how that is. Well, Mr. Chairman, I was on the board originally. 2004 is when that was changed. I know when I came on, it was like $60 uh, for a, a month for board members, and the uh, chairman got a little bit more. I have no problem, really. The thing I have with is, you know, their budget is their budget, but when they use up their budget, then they come to us, you know, for any additional. But in my eyes, I agree with uh, Commissioner Yoder. It's more of a, a budget item than it is, you know, just it's not like we're agreeing to, to buy something. This is going to be a recurring thing once we agree on it. And uh, that's what the finance committee and our, you know, budget time is for to take a look at, you know, what needs to be changed, increased, you know, and those things. That's, you know, my feelings on it. And, and I fully understand and appreciate that thought. But I see this the same as if they they have their local appropriation and if they choose to buy textbooks or computers or or whatever they choose out of their appropriation, you know they they don't have to come to us to ask us to spend that money. That that's their money to spend, but they have to ask us to set this salary because the law says that we have to do that. So I I don't see it as our budget item. I see it as their budget item. I have another statement. <coughs> In regards to this request, I see it as any other request when we're doing amendments to the budget every month. If one of our entities goes over their budget, then they're coming and asking. So it's up to them to delegate how they want to spend their money. So to me, I don't see a concern with it. I don't think it's one of our budget issues. Personally, um, and their board met, and they actually voted on uh, these salary increases, and uh, that passed. Just, I don't know. Was it a unanimous decision? It was a unanimous decision. Um, and can you read that uh, legislation off one more time, uh, Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir. Uh, the statute reads as follows. The tax levying authority for a local school administrative unit may, under the procedures of General Statute 153A-92, fix the compensation and expense allowances paid members of the Board of Education of that local school administrative unit. Funds for the per diem, substance, mileage for all meetings, accounting, city boards of education shall be provided from the current expense fund budget of the particular uh, county or city, the compensation and expenses that allows members of the boards of education shall continue at the same levels as paid on July 1st, 1975 until changed or pursuant to local act or pursuant to this section, 1955C, 1372, Article 5, S12, 1975C, 569, on and on. In reviewing board minutes, the last increase in per diem uh, for the Board of Education members took place on July 1st, 2004, and the proposed per diem for the Alexander County Board of Education members would be 
monthly meeting $600, call meeting $40, and school system function $20. Your consideration to provide uh, uh, any of the per diem would be appreciated, but they are fully prepared to pay this out of their budget with no additional revenues from us. Well, um, and I, I kind of agree with both sides of this opinion here. <laughs> yeah. uh, well, I, 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 you know, I, I look at it, you know, it's, it's the thing that, you know, it, it, I think in order to be open and transparent about the thing, we should have had it on the agenda, on the printed agenda, so the news media would have had it and the public would have had a chance to look at it. That's all I'm saying. Now, do I have a problem with the school board getting a pay raise? No, I wouldn't want to do it for what they're doing it for either. But I'm saying that it should be on the agenda and it should be presented during fiscal year 2021. That's all I'm saying. And let the public know that it's coming out there instead of adding it to the agenda tonight. 2020. 20, 20, well, 20, 2021 budget, because yeah. that's when they're asking for it, because they said when uh, they were looking for it, as we are working to establish a budget for the, they said 2019, 2020 fiscal year, but uh, that's basically uh, 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 will be 2021 budget. It's what they've got in their letter, 1920 fiscal year, but uh, I believe it'd be 2021 budget. Yeah. That's all I'm saying because, you know, it's already on the radio that they were going to come and ask the county commissioners for it. And I just think that uh, for us to be, we've been transparent in everything we've done. I mean, I've been proud of this board. They've been open about every single thing that we've done. And uh, we've let the public know. And uh, we've had open discussions about that. And that's, that's all I'm saying. I think that it should have been on the agenda and that way everybody would have gotten it. No questions, and if anybody had anything to say, because I can honestly tell you, I've had four or five phone calls since it's on the radio. They didn't feel like that the school board should get a pay increase. Okay, so you know that's the things I've had. Had another phone call today about it. So uh, that that's where I'm at on the thing, and then let it be handled through the finance committee and bring it back before the board at the time that the budget is presented. Yeah. Really, budget we're going to be starting it uh, next month. Next yeah, month, anyway. and that's not that big of a time. That's all I'd say. That's based on what I was told and what I heard today, and, and it was from two form, well, a couple of former commissioners. So that's that's where we're at. That's what I'm speaking about. And that's all. And I would still contend that it's not a budget issue. But you know, I'm not going to argue that point, sir. That's what we're here for. Agree to disagree. That's right. I mean, nothing wrong with disagreeing. I mean, you know. Once the boat's taken, it's over with, and everybody just walk on their merry, happy, loving, well, loving way. So, For uh, no action, we can table it till January. Uh, Mr. Yoder I, made a I, uh, I, I made a motion, motion to table it. That's all. I mean, I I don't see a particular problem with it, except that I would, you know, everything that we have done, uh, we have done really, really, really well. And this board has done a very, very good job of getting the information out there. And uh, uh, I'd like for it to continue that. We've done, I mean, I've been really proud of this board. I mean, the things I've heard, people knew what was going on and everything. And that's just uh, where I'm at and what was said to me today. So I'm just expressing what some of the former guys that used to be commissioners said. <clears throat> just give you my opinion here. Um, I don't, I don't think it is up to us to decide what they're I know we have I know we get to to vote on that <laughs> and we get to you know fix their compensation but it's part of their budget uh, they answer to the voters just like we do um, if the public is unhappy about it then they will find out about it in uh, about 11 months so uh, um, but I'm I'm agreeable to uh, tabling it to till January. Mr. Chairman, I'd call for the vote. You got a motion and a second. Can you restate your motion, please? I made a motion to table this for the uh, finance committee to uh, look at this for the fiscal year 2021 and to table it to a leader. 
and that will be taking place shortly and uh, uh, based on the new uh, agenda that we just uh, approved for the vote, I mean for the uh, budget. Now there's a big difference in tabling mm -hmm. this till January and sending this to the budget Well, committee. table it to January is fine because it'll still, it'll still come up and I mean we're going to vote on it one way or the other. I mean you know that. I mean it'll either be then or it'll be I mean, I think they sort of know how to do their budget, and I think looking at seeing how the revenue is and everything, it'd be a good time to do it. And uh, I don't have a problem with that in January. I want to uh, let me just ask for clarity here. So the motion's just to table it until January, to have it on the agenda, and then vote. Mm-hmm. Okay. I don't have a problem with that. Because I didn't. Yeah, I don't, don't have a problem with that. Yeah. But you mentioned well the finance committee, but I mean take we that can part out, I'm take you. that part out and we'll just table it to January and call for the vote in January to be fine with me. That way we get it out there and let everybody have their opinion on what's going on and see what kind of feedback we get. Okay, the motion on the table then is to Well, I think we need to uh, uh, he's already got a motion and uh, I think he needs to restate your motion or, or something. Did you not write it down? Uh, write, read it out what it was. Motion to table till January. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. All right. That's what it is. That's all, all right. it is. Yes. A good. second. Second. All in favor, please raise your right hand. Mr. French with other business. Yes, sir, uh, Mr. Chairman. Um, Several things to report on. Uh, of course, Buckeye Bridge, our water contractor, uh, continues to move along with water lines in Wittenberg Springs and is moving on Fox Court. Uh, the Bethlehem Sewer Project will, we will open bids on December the 5th. Um, we have scheduled a special call meeting for December 16th for the purpose of awarding those bids. Uh, awarding to the low bidder for the sewer project. Um, we have you have some sales tax information that we provided to you. Uh, the regular sales tax we've collected one million two hundred and seventy-five thousand dollars in sales tax, for, for which represents about ninety-four point nine four percent of twenty-five percent of our fiscal year. Uh, we budgeted. A little over five million, five million one hundred thirteen thousand dollars for a full year for sales tax for our regular sales tax. New sales tax for what we budgeted was one million six hundred fifty nine thousand. We collected so far a little over four hundred seven thousand, which is twenty five percent of the year, and we and we're right at that mark. So we're running just a little bit under that. Um, regular sales tax is running eight point eight percent. Uh, ahead, new sales tax is running set a little over seven percent ahead. Um, early bird registration for the 2020 NACO conference ends December 13th. Uh, several of you have indicated that you, you would like to go, so if you do, please let us know so we can receive and get that discount. Um, so it's just another week or so. Uh, the annual Christmas parade is, will be held um, this Saturday. Uh, December the 7th, also the Bethlehem Star Lighting, which uh, Mr. Mr. Mayberry reported on. So that's all I have, Mr. Chairman, unless there's any questions. I have a couple things for closed session. Any questions for Mr. French? You've had the consent agenda and entertain a motion to adopt the consent agenda. Make a motion to adopt the consent agenda as stated in our booklet. Second. All in favor, please raise your right hand. Motion passes unanimously. This time we will adjourn to, uh, per North Carolina General Statute 143318-11A4 and 6, you Economic Development and Personnel, we will adjourn to closed session and readjourn like only to adjourn. Thank you.